Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and today's video is part two of my Meyer 10 for 10 grocery challenge, where I show you everything that I made using 10 for 10 Meyer items. Like I said, this video is part two of my Meyer 10 for 10 series. If you missed my video last week on the items that I bought from Meyer's 10 for 10 sale, I'm gonna link it both up here and in the description for you guys to check out. But basically it was my grocery haul video, but I challenged myself, thanks to my husband John, to do almost an entire meal plan using items from Meyer's 10 for 10 sale. This included things like ground turkey, which I'm always happy when it's on sale for a dollar. Then like different box items, different snacks. My goal was to make as much food as I can using only those Meyer items. This was kind of inspired due to all of my Dollar Tree meals. I will link that playlist in the description as well. But I challenge myself every month to make three different Dollar Tree meals that are like $5 or less and are still reasonably healthy. And that was kind of my goal for this challenge too, but instead of doing just three meals, I was trying to do an entire week. So all together, I ended up with five dinners, enough breakfast to last us all seven days, and then snacks to last us the seven days as well. Now, as if you watch the video from last week, you'll see that not everything I bought was from the 10 for 10 sale. I think I ended up buying like 57 items. And with this particular sale, the 11th item is free. So I got five free items out of that, which was really awesome. But obviously in last week's video, I couldn't show you exactly what I made because I hadn't made it yet. So I turned this into a two-part series because I'm sure you guys wanted to see exactly what I made. Um, my goals were for this challenge were basically the same as the Dollar Tree challenge. Uh, the meals needed to be about $5 or less, give or take, and it needed to be reasonably healthy. Now, Meyer did actually have some fresh produce on their 10 for 10 sale, but I relied a lot on the frozen vegetables as well and a little bit of fruit. And I'm gonna tell you at the end what my thoughts were. I was actually pretty surprised at the turnout of this challenge. But let me get into all of the dinners I made and all of the breakfast and then also the snacks. So watch this. This first recipe is a stuffed pepper casserole and I loosely followed a recipe which I will link in the description. I say loosely because it doesn't have, che or this doesn't have cheese in it. Um, there was no cheese in the 10 for 10 sale. So as you can see, I was cooking some of that ground turkey and then I chopped up these two red bell peppers. I chopped them up nice and small. They could go inside the casserole. I think I only spent like $5 on this particular recipe, maybe six. Um, and then I used a couple of ingredients that I already had at home as you'll see. But um, I don't think this was too bad for uh, what I spent on the recipe. I went ahead and added the diced bell peppers to the ground turkey as it was cooking and got those softened up a little bit. I also added about a tablespoon of garlic. I let that cook for it was probably about 10 or 15 minutes and then I drained it after it was done. While that was going on, I microwaved this bag of the bird's eye brown rice. I only used one bag. I think I bought two to use, but then once I added the first bag, I was like, yeah, that's a lot of food. So I'm glad I just used one. I actually still have that one bag in the freezer. Then I added one can of those Rotel diced tomatoes, then a little bit of onion powder, and a couple other seasonings like the Worcestershire sauce and a paprika, salt and pepper, and then just mix it all together. Making a stuffed pepper casserole, by the way, is so much easier than making actual stuffed peppers. I poured it into a greased eight by eight dish. And like I said, I wish I had cheese on it. I would have sprinkled some cheese on top. So if you have any shredded cheddar, I would put maybe a cup on top 
Then I put it in the oven for, I think, 15 or 20 minutes at 375 just to let it heat up a little bit and while that was baking I made some green beans in the microwave so that's what it looks like when it's done super simple I dished them out into four different servings about a cup at a time I think I ended up getting two cups per serving which oh my gosh that was so much all together, well, this stuff pepper casserole has 336 calories, and I added some green beans. And as you can see, I have some leftover mashed potatoes. I probably would have used Chex Mix as a side, but I saw these and needed to use them up, so it was actually a super good dinner. The next recipe we'll be making is the burritos. These are just vegetarian burritos, so I'm using another bag of the brown rice. Um, this ha has calorie info for the entire bag. Like, who's gonna eat the whole bag? Uh, I might, I don't know. But I microwaved that. While that was going, I just opened up the can of beans and put them into a container to heat up in the microwave once the rice was done. Then I opened up the package of tortillas. This one had the soft tortilla shells and the hard ones, which actually turned out really well. It was kind of nice to have a good variety. Um, you can see the serving sizes here. I didn't quite follow it because I wanted a mixture of both. So I ended up getting one of the soft tortillas and two of the corn tortillas. Once the, everything was done microwaving, I used a half cup of rice per person. So I ended up getting four servings out of the rice. I just put a little bit into each of the shells. Then I used a half cup of beans total for all three of mine. I think the can of beans serves like three and a half. So I got maybe three-ish servings out of that. Then I put a little bit of salsa in each one as well as some sour cream. And again, I wish I had cheese for these, but I didn't. Turned out really good though. Altogether, this was 520 calories for all three of them. The next dinner I made was called a cheesy beef skillet. And I actually got this recipe from the craft website. So it's slightly different. Um, but I'm, I am cooking up the ground turkey in the pan, opening up the can of diced tomatoes just to get it ready. And I'm using both of those boxes of the Annie's mac and cheese. So what you do is just cook all of the pasta like you would normally, make up the mac and cheese like normal. And then once that's finished, you just add in the cooked ground turkey and the diced tomatoes. So I'm just getting the cheese mixture together for this. And the original recipe called for some shredded cheddar on top. Like I keep saying, I don't have any cheese to put on top, but it was good without it. Um, I think on occasion, I've also added a packet of taco seasoning because it's kind of like a taco-ish pasta and that turned out really good as well. But I'm just, in I'm combining all of the ingredients here and this actually I made serve six. So it gave us quite a few leftovers. And I got maybe a cup and a half serving for each and then I cooked up the other bag of green beans. So all together with the green beans, I believe it, I think it was 500 all together with the green beans actually, which is not a bad dinner. We are huge fans of pasta and I know that John was happy because he loves mac and cheese. And speaking of pasta, here's our other one. This is a tuna dish with two bags of these, this uh, Nor pasta side, the broccoli and cheddar. So I have two packages of that. So in the pot, I added some water and some milk, like the direction said, since I was using two bags, I just doubled the amount, put, set that to a boil. And I use a bag of baby carrots that I had bought just to roast them up as a side item. So the oven's preheated to 400. I actually used the rest of another bag that I had. I just sprinkled it with some salt and pepper, sprayed it with some cooking spray and roasted it for about 20 minutes or so. While that was going on, I microwaved this bag of peas. I was going to add that into the pasta once it was done. 
And once the water came to a boil, I just added both bags of the pasta. I was actually wanting rice, by the way, but when I went to Meijer, they were all out of rice, so pasta yet again. When the pasta was pretty much all finished, I added both cans of drained tuna to the pot, as well as the peas, and just gave it a really good stir. And as you can see at this point, the carrots were completely done, and this one served four. And I believe altogether it was 456 calories per serving, which is not too bad. As you can see, we get a really good serving. It was about a cup and a half of the mix and then some of the carrots. I think this one was actually my favorite. I don't use the Nor pasta sides very often, but this one was actually pretty good. And again, speaking of pasta, we have another pasta dish. This is just a traditional spaghetti with a meat sauce. So once again, I've got the ground turkey I am cooking up in the pan. I've got some water boiling. I was making this serve four, but we had a couple of other kids coming, so I ended up making the entire box of pasta, which was eight servings. But once the ground turkey was all finished cooking, I added the spaghetti sauce to it and just let it heat up for a little bit. So I've got the entire box of spaghetti in there. And once that was done, I just drained it and added it back to the pot. In the meantime, I took this bag of broccoli cuts and stuck it in the microwave to use as a side item. I don't know about you, but I like to add a little bit of olive oil or butter to my spaghetti after it finishes. That way it won't all clump together. It works pretty well. So that's about four ounces of spaghetti. I do use my food scale to kind of measure it. It was about a cup of the meat sauce, and I don't really like the broccoli cuts a lot. See, as you can see, there's not a lot of florets in it, but I added about a cup of the broccoli, and all together, this was 495 calories, serving four. That is it for the dinners. Now we get to go into the breakfast. I bought two boxes of these Meyer waffles. These were the multigrain ones, and they were actually really good. Um, these last, this lasted John and I two days, or not five days, with two servings each. And I am chopping up a banana here just to put on top. I also served it with some cottage cheese and then some maple syrup on top. And oh my gosh, like I like to make my own waffles, but these were so good. They actually kept me full for quite a while, probably due to the cottage cheese as well. But yeah, I just love waffles. <laughs> I wish Allison liked them, but nope, she does not. The next breakfast I made was this Quaker protein oatmeal. It's the maple and brown sugar, 220 calories for it, unless you add milk. Uh, 12 grams of added sugars, but 10 grams of protein, which is not bad. All you do is just fill the fill, put it with water into that little fill line right there. Microwave it for about a minute, and then it is all ready. I served this oatmeal for myself with some hard-boiled eggs. I'll show you how I made those here in a minute. And then also some sliced apples. And the protein from the eggs plus the protein from the oatmeal, it actually kept me full for quite a while. And of course I have to add my everything bagel seasoning to my hard-boiled eggs because that seasoning goes on everything. So the oatmeal was actually pretty good. It was really sweet. Um, I don't really like all the sugar in it, but it was actually super good. And the third breakfast I made were these breakfast burritos. I bought two of them, one for me and one for John. So all you do is open up one end of it and you microwave it for about a minute. And I'm not too fond of microwave burritos just because like the inside, their middle part gets really hot, but the outsides are really hard and still a little bit cold. 
So, but this one actually turned out really good. I'm gonna cut it in half here. It was really cheesy. It looks a little mushy on the inside, to be honest with you, but honestly, it was really good. I also served this with some cottage cheese and all the protein from that actually kept me full for a while. So you can see like, it's kind of mushy with the eggs and all the gooey cheese, but honestly, I would buy these again. So that is all the breakfast that we had. I'm just gonna show you some of the snacks that I made now. Now I've shown you my Instant Pot hard boiled eggs before, but in an Instant Pot, I'm just adding a cup and a half of water, and then I'm adding 12 eggs just on top of the trivet. I don't have one of those special egg things, and you don't need one for the hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot. But I set the timer for five minutes. I use the 555 method, which I learned here on the internet. So we started cooking it for five minutes, and then you let it do a five minute natural release before putting them in ice water. So as you can see, I'm a wimp. I use my spoon to release the pressure, but after five minutes of that, they are done, put them straight into ice cold water and let them sit for five minutes as well. That's the 555 method. And these eggs peel beautifully. I will never make hard boiled eggs in the same way ever again. I'm gonna show you here in a second, but like the shells just peel right off in almost one piece. So I start from the middle like that and look, it comes off just like that and then I rinse it off a little bit and put it into a container. And once I finish, I put a wet paper towel on top. I don't know if that does anything, but I feel like it helps <laughs> stick it in the fridge and it is good for about a week. And then that was my snack with some sliced apples and again, everything bagel seasoning. My final snacks were these Icelandic provision skier. I bought the coconut and the vanilla kind and I love these. It's like 15 grams of protein, keeps me full for a long time. This particular day, I made a parfait because I was going out, needed to take it with me. So I put all the yogurt into this container here, and then I diced up my apple to put in there as well. I forget where I got this container, by the way, I think it was Amazon, but it's got like a small section for like granola or fruit or something. My apple was so big, I had to use both the big container and the little part, but yeah, um, I love parfaits, especially yogurt and apples, and this made for a very filling snack. So the question you guys probably have is, how did you like the challenge? Well, you know, I had a few mixed feelings. First of all, I am used to eating lots and lots of fresh produce. I'll eat like really huge salads. I will roast a ton of vegetables to eat with my dinner. I'm just used to eating large volumes of food with mostly whole unprocessed ingredients. And to be honest, I couldn't really do that using mostly 10 for 10 items. I bought some Annie's mac and cheese, as you saw, and then I bought like those Nor pasta side dishes and breakfast burritos and little cups of oatmeal and things like that. And while those aren't necessarily bad, Bad for you they don't have all the nutrients that like a whole unprocessed food would have so I would find myself really tired throughout the week and definitely not satisfied with all the food that I ate now it may not be all because of the food because I was undergoing some stress here and there and so it might have been the food it might have been the stress it could have been a combination of both but it was interesting to see how the food kind of affected my body so I was definitely looking forward this week to eating more of my homemade foods and eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm not saying you should never eat those items because I will probably end up buying more to eat at some point as well. But I think a whole week of them just definitely got to me in my body. And that's definitely something to think about. If you find yourself kind of sluggish or grumpy or even kind of depressed, take a look at the food you're eating and maybe like make a diary of things that you eat and see, well, Maybe the, pot, the boxes of pasta or whatever that I eat are affecting my body. 
who knows? But all in all, it was definitely a fun challenge. And leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. I think that was pretty fun. And I know Kroger has a 10 for 10 sale going on sometimes as well, but it is definitely not as big as the Meyer ones. So I don't know if I could do an entire week menu on that, but the next time Kroger has a 10 for 10 sale, I will check it out because I know a couple of you have suggested Kroger because I know Meyer is like a regional thing up in like the Ohio, Michigan area. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I've got more videos coming out like these. I also have more Dollar Tree meals coming out in the future, so watch out for those, as well as more recipes and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later.